Q1043. Live at 5, powered by BMW. Ken Dashow in the studio with me. My hero, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Greg Lake in town. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, ever since hearing you on the air with Scott Muni. Yes. Our late lamented All those years ago. Fats, he's back. He's looking down there and smiling, go, yeah. smoking a cigarette. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Greg, it's great having you in town. It's lovely to be here. It is always lovely to be here, but particularly nice to come and see you. Thank you so much. Greg's in town because he's doing a tour called Songs of a Lifetime Tour, and we get to see him at the NYCB Theater at Westbury Sunday night, April 22nd. Last time I saw you, it was you and Keith Emerson yes. doing your own tour, and that was magnificent. It was the dream of all ELP fans is to kind of not only hear the music, but to do Q&A and kind of break it down for us. Did you have fun doing that? Well, it was fun. It was fun. And uh, it, it kind of, it, it was in a way the forerunner of this. In actual, in actual fact, how this came about was I've just um, just about finished writing my autobiography. It's Congratulations. Un, un, unsurprisingly called Lucky Man. I, I never would have guessed. No, no, no. So <laughs> right out of the blue there. And in a way, it's a journey that I've been on with the audience. We've shared this journey together. And I came up with the idea of Songs of a Lifetime, you know, as a, as a way to, to sort of reshare that journey together. As I say, I'm going to do it, tell some stories about how the songs came about for me. And I'm also interested to hear from the audience how, what they meant to them, you know, because every time I see somebody, they say, oh, Greg, you know, that brain salad surgery, that got me through college or... Absolutely. You no, know, they've got their stories attached to them all. And um, so it's a time to sit down and exchange, sort of an interactive thing, really. Greg Lake, my guest, live in the studio at Q1043. We call this live at 5, Greg. We ask you to sing for your coffee, some fine Q1043 coffee. Please do a song for us. And for the gearheads out there, what are you playing? It's a beautiful Gibson. J200. It's gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Can we uh, get a tune from you? You certainly can. Greg Lake, live in the studio at Q1043. had white horses and ladies by the score all dressed in satin and waiting by the door Ooh, what a lucky man he man he was white lace and feathers they made up his bed a gold covered mattress on which he was led Ooh, what a lucky man he was Ooh, what a lucky man He was All right He went to fight wars For his country and his king Of his honor and his glory The people would sing Ooh, what a lucky man he was What a lucky man he was A 
bullet had found him His blood ran as he cried No money could save him So he laid down and he died Ooh, what a lucky man he was Ooh, what a lucky man he was Thank you very much. Greg Lake live in studio at Q1043. It's amazing, Greg. You you bring a MacBook with you. You have ELP <laughs> in the studio. I know. Well, you know, one of the interesting things I did is I went back to the original recording and I extracted the original harmonies. Fantastic. So it's fun. It's, it's like nostalgia in real time. <laughs> you know, it's fun to do. Whoa, it's nice. It was, it's fun to do. Hey, so how is Keith Everson feeling? He had health issues this past year. We heard it had been serious for a while. Is he okay? I believe he is, yeah. But he's, he's, he went to hospital, uh, had an operation, and uh, he came through fine. Fantastic. Goodness, yeah. Listen, you talk about what the songs mean to the audience. For me, you know, as a kid growing up, for all the critics, oh, this bombastic, over-the-top, overly... You, Emerson, Lake, and Palmer opened the door, thanks to pictures at an exhibition, to Mussorgsky, which led me to the classical composers. Mm. You know, to the his love of Aaron Copland brought me to classical music, to jazz. ELP was the doorway for all this wonderful music, and I share that, I think, with a lot of the fans. It opened up the possibilities well, of what very, else is out there. It's very kind of you to say so. I mean, us maybe and, uh, and other people, but... Uh, I think the difference was, at the time uh, ELP came through, and of course before them King Crimson... I was just going to ask you. Uh, most bands in England, most rock bands in England, took their influence, of course, from, from America, from the blues, soul music, gospel music, some country and western perhaps, that mixture of, of American music. And I think by the time King Crimson came along, we were really looking, trying to be different trying to do something original. And so the idea occurred not to use the same inspiration that all the other bands were using. And we would take our inspiration from European music. And that was the difference, really. I mean, most rock singers at the time used to, English rock singers, yeah. they would sing with a sort of mid-American accent. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, yes. But, but uh, and so I, I always just sang with an English accent, you know. So that's what kind of made it different. I suppose... Uh, at first, it sounded, you know, uh, as though we were trying to be clever or, or intellectual. But that wasn't true at all. It was really just that it was European rather than American. Something you had said uh, when we had talked uh, a while back that bears repeating, in that a lot of pop music of what I hear today not only sounds the same, is the same. I was just reading in the Times that the same producers and the same computer tracks go to every pop singer and mm. the same lyrics mm. that they do over and over. Something you had said to me is that we weren't trying to copy Yes, Yes weren't trying to copy us. We were trying to 
do our own thing. We would listen to that and say, how can we make that even better? How can yes. we go further? I mean, everyone has, has got influences, of course. Uh, I mean, this tour that I'm about to do, Songs of a Lifetime, is almost about that, you know, of yeah. being influenced by these different elements. Um, so uh, influences are great. And I, now I look back and I see, you know, the bands that were influenced by us. Sure. Like I can see now today people like the Red Hot Chilies will you know, openly admit that they're, they're, they're big ELP fans, you know. Of course. And that's really an honor to, to, uh, to have that said. And uh, that's something I'm very proud of. But I think to that extent, that was really what it was. It was European music. Of course, it has to be said, nurtured by the United States of America, had they not taken us to their, to their hearts, uh, and as you brought out, people like Scott Muni, absolutely the late and great Scott Muni, had he not been a believer, then we would not have had the chance to develop our careers in the way that we uh, we did. And of course, we'd be eternally, eternally grateful. As I am as well to him, you know, he's well, that, that, my, yeah. my radio dad, my father confessor, my bookmaker, my yes. <laughs> everything, you yeah, know, yeah. he was... <laughs> He was a yeah. well, marvelous man. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Greg Lake, my guest in studio. You mentioned the band before ELP, the great King Crimson. Yes. And of all, there, I listen, I'm a prog rock kid. Allison Steele and Scott were my guys, you know, and listening to Lark's Tongues and Aspic and some of the Ear islands and some of the early things. But this one album, mm. 21st Century Schizoid Man, mm. is alive and well in 2012 yes. as much as it was... What, 1970, was yes. it? 71? Yeah, 70. Wow. And yeah. here we are. You know, I think about it all the time. 21st century schizoid man. It's absolutely, you could have written it yesterday. Well, uh, Kanye West ha has got a track called Power. <laughs> and the hook of that song is 21st century schizoid man. Really? Yeah. So it lives, it lives on, you know. Isn't it remarkable? Yeah, it is really. But I think... Uh, as my father used to say, scum floats to the top. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, perhaps there's some truth in that somewhere. Okay, yeah, so you, this is a Songs of a Lifetime tour. Uh, Greg is going to be at the NYCB Theater, Westbury, Sunday night, April 22nd. I wouldn't miss that for the world. Tickets available at LiveNation.com. As a storyteller's part in explaining songs and Q's and A's, tell us a little, how did, I mean, here's this, the first ELP album of the Three Fates and largesse jazz rock classical. How does Lucky Man come into that world? How did it become, hey, we need a really hit ballad? The story of it was that I'd written a song when I was a kid, when I was 12 years old. It was just a naive sort of little folk song. It was the first thing I ever did when I bought a guitar. My mum, mother bought me a guitar actually, and I learned four chords. And with those four chords, I wrote this little song, Lucky Man. At 12? At 12, yeah. Wow. Uh, and I'd never, you know, I had no, no vision of it ever becoming recorded. It was just something I did for my own amusement, really. And it, we, we, we came to the making of the first DLP album. And we actually got to the end of the recording sessions and we were one track short. <laughs> and everybody looks, you know, around the studio. Has anybody got any more material? No, and there was a deathly silence. <laughs> and uh, I, I said, well, look, you know, if we need one song, I've got this little folk song I wrote when I was a kid. And so, uh, you know, Keith said, well, play it and let's have a listen, you know. And I played it and he said, well, I, I can't see how that would work, you know. Yeah. So I said, well, look, we haven't got anything else. So I said, I'll, I'll just I'll just knock out a version. you know. And I did it on my own. I, I'm everybody on that record. Are I, you really? Yeah, I did the bass, the guitar, the vocals, everything. <laughs> and uh, when Keith came back into the studio and heard it, he was shocked. You know, this little sort of tinkly folk song had yeah. developed into quite, quite a powerful track. Block harmonies and everything. Right. And so he said, oh, I, I, I suppose I should play on it. And I'd already put the guitar solo on the the, the middle, so I, uh, I said, "Well, put something over the end, you know." And that's where, and that's the, synth where the Moog the synthesizer end. came in. We just had it delivered that day. <laughs> that and was so the he, first he, day he had the literally. Moog. He went out there and started experimenting with it, pressing the. It's called portmento, the effect where it, one yes. note slides up to the other and it slides down. Ooh, <laughs> you know. And we just recorded him experimenting with it. And that is the solo that's on the end. 
Isn't it amazing how at, casual at the like, time at the time we thought it was just a fit, just a throwaway. A fit, yeah. And it's funny how the Greg Lake ballad became a staple somewhere along the way of every album that whether from the beginning on trilogy and on and on because of that really because of the the, the uh, success of lucky man everybody oh greg you got to do an acoustic song on the record you know, so. now you're stuck with you want to now do you're not. stuck with it that's right yes